All right, another deal structure Sunday. Um, actually, as I was thinking about this deal, I don't know what the source was. It was either an expired or a FISBO, and the reason I don't know is this deal goes back about six or seven years from today, and the buyers were given a five-year lease purchase because why? Because when I sat down with a seller, it started out as a sandwich discussion at his high top in his kitchen. And the more we talked, the more he said, geez, I'd really like to be off the deed. We turned it into a sub two and bought the home. And of course, there's a first and a second on it and it stayed in his name. Now with this past buyer that just unfortunately had to leave, that didn't default by the conventional sense of the word financially, they separated. And when they separated, she actually, the one that, the, the wife ended up staying in the home and then she decided she was gonna move on because the kids moved on, the ex moved on, and everyone was gone. And she decided it wasn't for her and I think she had been at so long there was no hard feelings whatsoever. She literally said, here's when I'm vacating. And so, I don't know, summer, summary wise, we probably pulled in 40 grand or so on that deal between payday one and two. And there was no three because here we are, okay? So now we resold it, pretty cool story, but let me give you the, the, the backdrop here. So now we have to treat it as that 30 or 40 grand, whatever it was, maybe it was 50, that's, that's in our pocket, gone. Okay, next. We start off today with a first mortgage of 174,973. Now I rounded some of these numbers, guys, so you don't have to get too caught up in the numbers. There's a second mortgage of 41 in change. I just put 41. So all total, I got about 215,973. Okay? Now, when we did this home five or six years ago, the other reason we needed it sub two was there was no equity. It was a teeny bit upside down. Very difficult to make the deal work, so that's why we had given that woman five years, okay? Just so you can piece all that together. Okay, what happens next? We get it sold for 259 dollars Couple nuances here. This home in New England has what's, what's called an old cesspool. Bottom line is where the poop goes is no longer legal to do, not legal, it's not, that's the wrong word. It's no longer acceptable. So you need to have a brand new septic system put in. In Massachusetts, which is where this property is, if we were to do that and the buyer was getting financing with bank financing, the bank would require a new septic right then. The septic system is gonna cost 25 to 50 grand. The person who's taking this home does rehab and expects to be around 40,000. Now, we pass that on to them. They took the home as is. They understand it needs a new septic. They understand the cesspool currently where La Poop goes works. It's okay, but they also know it might not work for a long time. Here's how the deal panned out. Payday one is 30,000. That was 20,000 up front and two payments of five. Pretty typical for us. So as you can see, more than 10% already. Now here's what Nick did. For those of you that aren't associates, this is where the money is. What Nick did in addition to getting this number up, I think they might've started at like 15 or 18. Brilliantly does it because he's done hundreds of them, if not approaching a thousand. So that's step one. Step two is now when we have property sub two, and we'll show you how to do this, we say to the buyers, after they've been through screening, they think they have rent to own and they gotta eventually jump through a bunch of hoops and get a loan. And that's awful experience right now. I hate to say it to the bankers, but it is. To get a loan stinks right now. So we say to them, hey, strong deposit, good news. And we actually wrote this into an addendum, the attorneys did. We said, if you're not late on your scheduled two five grand deposits and you're not late for at least six months, I like to go 12, we went six months here, on your rent payment, and you decide over time to increase this deposit to 20%, so it'll be upwards of 51, 52 grand, we will consider owner financing you. You won't have to ever go to the bank, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer. That's a cool thing. The stress comes right off of them because they don't have to go through the underwriting process. They don't have to pay 15 or 20 grand in fees. What a waste of time and money. I've been through it. It's awful and we know the business. So that's a cool thing for you to know what we do with sub twos. So payday two looks like this. Um, we have mortgage payments totaling 13, 57, 72. That's the outgo. Our incoming is 17, 76, 42. So we got a total of 418.28 spread. Not too bad, actually. I think on the first buyer we had less, okay? Now, 24 months is all we gave these people because that's what they wanted, but quite frankly, remember, we might switch this to owner financing and have a 20-year deal here, okay? All right, so over 24 months, if my math is correct, we're sitting around 10,000 bucks. It's, it's a little more, but about 10,000. 
Okay, so you got payday one, payday two. What does payday three look like? Again, in case some of you guys are new, payday number three looks like this. We got principal pay down. It's not much because this is an equity loan. It's interest only, and this is the only one amortizing, and it's not amortizing that much. Over 24 months especially, it's 58.25. At the end, I'm gonna to talk to you about what happens when we sell it on a financing. There's a bunch of nuances there, but right now that's the number if they cash us out. By chance, they go to a bank and they wanna do that. Um, the price markup, as you can see, is around 40, that's almost 44 grand, 43.927. But we gotta take off and we gotta close this. If we were to close it in 24 months, we gotta take off the deposit, right? We already received it, just like a conventional deal. Everybody gets confused on that. At the end, it becomes a conventional deal. What's the price? How much they pay so far? And what's the mortgage gonna be if they go to, to a bank? So that's, that, that leaves us with a payday three net of only 19,752. But if you add up one, two, and three, we're at about 59,790. Now, below our average, but guess what? The septic system would have cost 25 to $40,000. That's a nice deal where they are able to take that on. So you say, is that a needle in the haystack maybe? No. We've done a lot of these. So go on the deal structure videos, the other ones that we feature here. Look at the deal done by Stephen Lauren Mernick in Connecticut. Look at some of the ones we've done. We never rehab the homes unless it's a problem child and we have to get it back on the market and someone defaulted. When we take them on, we take them on with that in mind. It's habitable, we can put them in the, in the property. Okay, so 59 grand deal if they go to a bank. If they don't go to a bank, what happens? Well, keep in mind, this has been amortizing now, right? Clearly, because we've had it for, I don't know, six or seven years and they had it before us. So it's amortizing more and more principal. If they were to start fresh and they're gonna bring 59 grand to the table, let's say, um, yeah, 59 or so grand just to make these round. We're gonna give them a note at 200 grand. We're gonna give them the note at a higher interest rate than we're paying here. So their amortization principal wise is gonna be a lot less than ours. So every single month, we'll make sure that we have a nice spread and we'll make sure that our amortization is such that the principal is hammering down faster than theirs. So at the end, there's gonna be a bigger payday three and we keep getting a spread. It's a pretty cool thing and it's a win-win because again, they don't have to go to a bank. And when you say that to people after they've been through the process, you qualified them the right way, they think they have to then go to a bank within two years and you drop that on them, it's a joy for every single buyer and this is what we're doing a lot more of. Now, if you don't get a sub two property right away, can you look at every sandwich lease you get in the course of nine to 24 months and go to them and renegotiate for a sub two? Yes, we'll show you how to do it. That's another video for another day. Hope you enjoyed the deal structure Sunday. Be sure to subscribe and be sure to bring your deal so we can help you do this to the Wicked Smart sit downs every single Thursday. It's actually the first, second, and third Thursday. And if you're a QLS holder, so you have the course, you're going through it, come to the fourth Thursday. It's for QLS only and it's for deal structuring and it's called Wicked Smart Workshop. Thursdays at four o'clock. Hope to see you there live. Mm -hmm.